He started from Wow Child, hey, IK, Ikwamosa. <laughs> are you joking? You walk in the room and people are just like, that's IK, that's IK, that's IK. Say my name. How does that Say make you feel? Name. Say my name. I hope I, I hope to be that kind of person that when you walk into a room, but yeah, people know you, everybody recognizes you and stuff. Um, but nobody ever feels scared to come say hi to you, you know, because they're, they're, that's a whole different level of celebrity where people are like, when you walk into a room and they're like, don't look in the I direction. think people feel don't that way about, not like, not like in a terror, afraid way about you. Yeah. I think it's like, I've seen, I've been around you yeah. and I've seen how when you walk in a room, I hear the whispers, it's like, that's IK. But because you're such a friendly guy, yeah. you, sometimes you turn around and you bring out the IK act. Straight up. So it's like, like welcoming. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, wherever I go, like in the gym today, some ladies were walking behind me and I heard them say, that's IK. And I was like, hey, hi. <laughs> like, she was like, I love you. I was like, I love you too. Oh you know? So it's, I, I, I want to be that person for the rest of my life. I don't want to be that guy that, guy that walks into a room and people are like, don't oh. be too much. Don't be, oh too my God. don't be annoyed. Don't let him know. Nah, don't look in his direction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I get it. Some people are huge, huge stars like that. Like you walk into a place, you people might not walk up to him, not for lack of greatness, but for how great they are. Mm. You know, um, you might not be able to approach them just for like, <gasps> yeah. oh I also think it depends on the suit. You like know? sometimes because movie stars are not really there. They're seen and not really heard. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so you don't but know what to expect you when you walk were, up to them. Before I even get into that, let me just say welcome to all people at home because I'm sure they've been watching you and I just gone. This is what happens when friends link up. Yeah. Today is one of the most exciting days that I get to be doing what I do. I absolutely love the fact that I am sitting beside a radio god, a uh, host uh, uh, extraordinaire. And listen, he gave me my first big break. If Ike did not give me the break, I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened, but it might have gone through another journey and it might have been harder, it might have been easier, but we give flowers to who, you know, is very well deserving. And I think that you don't, I don't say this enough to you. Thank you, IK. Girl, you say this almost every time you see me. So, I know, so. but then because that's how I genuinely feel. No, I appreciate you for, for being So ladies and gentlemen, first, IK Osaki Odua. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now you can carry on. Yeah, no, no. I, I appreciate you for always being appreciative. But yeah. like I've always said, you were born to do this. So whether it was me, whether it was some other Joe somewhere, you, there was no way that your path wasn't going to lead you to greatness. So mm. I was just fortunate enough to be the guy on, on the road that was like, oh my God, I see you, I see you. you and know? let me so. tell you if you've forgotten. So I remember, as I said, I started my radio career when I was, what, 19, but that was a brief stint at Cool FM when they just opened. And I went ahead and went to uni, forgot about that dream, but I was so unhappy in banking. I was so unhappy. And yeah, I remember my siblings said. coming home and, you know, saying, we know you don't really enjoy this banking thing. Why don't you try and go back into this entertainment thing that you started? And my sister used to go to church with you. And she goes, you know, IK goes to my church. You know, I can ask him what the process is like for you to come and, you know, audition. And she came home excitedly and she goes, oh, IK says you can just come and drop your voice. And, you know, he would, when he gets to the office, he would look, he would make sure that, you know, it's, it's the audition is taken seriously. Little did I know that IK was going to show up himself for the audition. <laughs> it was nerve-wracking. It was you and Omalicha. I remember yeah. being in that studio booth and thinking, this is the guy I've listened to every single morning on my way to school. This is the guy who just is so witty. He doesn't. He can't even help it. He turns on that microphone and he sells the entire Lagos on the morning drive. <laughs> and I'm just like, how am I going to do this right now? I'm sure it's not great. And I did the audition and you were you so soothing, awesome. so comforting. I still remember it perfectly. I know. And had, you took us out to eat afterwards, because that's who you are. It was, you know what it was? We had gone through, we had auditioned 800 and something people, I think it was just the week before, and we were, we were looking for people. And of all the people we auditioned, your personality just stood out, like, hands down, your personality really? just, it was you there, you were clear, right? And so I remember we were deliberating and looking for um, people, and everybody was like, oh, this person... This person did this. This person remembered all their lines. I said, yeah, she remembered her lines, but she's there's no personality. That person is dead. I'm like, this person, personality all day. We This is who you want to know. Who would you want to be friends with? And everybody was like, ah, no, hands down, this person. I'm like, that's who we hire, you know? I'm going to so. cry, guys, <laughs> because he literally, and you didn't just hire me and leave me in the wild. I trained on your show. Yeah. Every yeah. single day, you would pick us up from the filling station, and you you would just literally say, take this job, do this. And the fact that you could trust me 
I was in awe of you all that time. Still am. I'm still in awe of you with all the great, great things you do and the fact that you, people don't know how hard you work. One of the things about you that I really admire is your work ethic. People don't, don't know how hard you work. I remember then you were working with us. Then you started working with, um, what's like it? Cecil. No, like I'm not apart from Cecil, you worked with, uh, what's his name? Ayo. Ayo and Marshall. Yeah, yes. so you had like three jobs back to back. You were hustling. At this girl was gym. grinding. <laughs> you know, like while well, every, everybody else was trying to be a baby girl or a baby boy. You, yeah. know? you were hustling. You deserve whatever it is that you have today. I see people today coming into the business and they still don't have half the drive or the effort or the fight that you had back then. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, it's no brainer. But you have literally taken this gift that God has given to you and you have exploded in such a way that when you think about male hosts in Nigeria, is IK... And maybe two other people's name that'll be mentioned. It's, They're good to drag us out no, 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 I've seen like, it. No, Small no, no, gen dragging like, coming our I way. Like, no, except we want to lie to ourselves. Like once you once once they think you it's not easy to do Big Brother for the amount of years yeah. that you did it. Yeah. The personality you gave to me, you gave Big Brother character. Mm. I remember that people would not just watch because of the contestants. I care every Sunday. I care and just the way you were just flowing. I care. And I remember when you guys first started, when you would also have like a boy tea, was the one from South yes. Africa. And you, boy, we. <laughs> the cutest thing. You know what I mean? So when you talk about like radio personalities who have successfully transitioned to television, uh, hosting of events, master of ceremony, extraordinary, there's IK and maybe two, three others in every room. Let me tell you what I mean. With the females, we're so many of us. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you leave a competition and almost come and host this, come and host this, come and host this. But with the guys, it's like, you set the pace. You are the template. I've seen many wow. guys say, I want to do like IK. I want to be like IK. It's not easy to have held down Big Brother the way you, you started it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And gave character to the show. So, I mean, for me, I've always wanted to ask you, how have you kept yourself through these years in terms of reinventing yourself and just oiling that well? You know, you, you just touched on a whole bunch of things. So, first of all, very humbling to hear all of that. Um, but I think the difference, first of all, with the guys and the girls is, unfortunately, many people don't hire girls for their for their talent. Mm. They hire them for their looks. Mm. So, she's pretty. Oh, she'll be great for TV. And that isn't always true, mm. you know. Um, I think some of the greatest TV female hosts are not pretty people, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. They're, they're not the most perfect looking. Kat Dilly has a, a crooked nose, which I, I think is kind of cute. Mm. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg yeah. is Whoopi Goldberg. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Wendy. Wendy, Wendy well. Williams, you Wendy's know what I mean? So I, I don't know that we should we should prioritize looks because we don't do that with the guys. Yes. With the guys, we don't prioritize the looks. It's can you do the job? I think they do also heal. I, I, can't, know. You're tall, I don't know. Like your whole packaging works. I don't know. When you look at Ebuka, he's good looking. You're good but looking. I think that's I think that's just a matter of chance. I mean, Ebuka is a chiseled fine boy, you know, and all of that. But uh, and I'm you know six foot three of twisted <laughs> steel and sex appeal. But <laughs> yeah, um, we, removing two of us from the equation, yeah. if you were going to hire guys for their look, so mm. just fine boys, then Dinala would be hosting everything on TV. Because Dinala is like the funniest man in entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> like, I agree. Pretty boy. Like, yeah. you know, so I don't yeah. think it's just for the looks. Yeah. I think it, I think generally they will hire a male presenter or host for how well you can do the job. Maybe in acting. Mm. You want a fine boy, so you look for all the good-looking ones. But I think when it comes down to it, people are more particular, critical of guys or they're more aware of a guy's talent mm. than they are for women. For women... Unfortunately, most of the guys who hire resort to their base instincts to think of, oh, she's pretty, man. They would like her, like I like her, so hire her. Mm. You know, but um, going back to what you were saying about holding it down for so long, I think, look, eh, it's just the intentionality of realizing you don't, you're never going to be in one spot forever. You're never going to hold something down forever. There's always going to be a new... Even if you're a footballer, you can't be Pele for 40 years. Mm. There's going to be a Neymar that's going to come and take this gig for you. So you've got to be planning your next move, so that when Neymar comes, you're not blocking his runs. You're not like, ah, I'm Maradona, I'm, mm. the, I'm the man, oh. mm. the whole, you, know, you, have to, you have to give him his own flowers, give him his own space, allow him enjoy the platform the way you did. When I came into the game, right, there were some top dog guys. They were, they were the names, they were the icons of the day. And I remember going to almost each of them, almost every one of them saying, listen, I want to do this like you, I want to do this like you. And I remember how poorly 
many of them reacted, mm. you know. Um, none of them offered any space. None of them offered any platform. None of them, even the ones that recognized talent, would not give any room or any space to let you express yourself. And I thought to myself, I don't want to be you guys when, mm. when I eventually get to where you are. I don't want to be you. Because I, I understood what it was. They were threatened. Mm. Like, if I let this person come into my space, he might overshadow me. So I decided right from that time that when, when I do get up to some level, I'm always going to create room for the next guy while I work on where I want to go next. I don't want to be so caught up in this whole presentation thing that when a new, hot, fine, young presenter comes along, I'm blocking him instead of promoting him, mm. you know? That, that shouldn't be. So I, I, I viewed my career like a footballer, right? Uh, you have a footballer, the average has maybe, if you're too good, if you're too hot, 20 years. Mm. That's if you start at 15. Do you understand? <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> for real. So when you come in, because no matter what you do, once you hit that, if, let's be let's be general, 35. Mm. Once you hit 35, they, they're, they're like, he's done. Yeah. They're looking for the new guy, right? Yeah. Now, I, I've been fortunate. I am 45. I just turned 45, right? I was just about and to I'm say still that. Doing, uh, <laughs> I'm you're, still doing this not, thing. Yeah, I'm still that... doing the thing. But I've, I've started to transition to the space where I'm no longer just the presenter, but a platform for mm. presenters. So I've, we've started Light Radio, my radio station. Um, and it's because I want to be able to create other means, you know. Um, I want to be able, you know, Jay-Z said something. He said, okay, I can't use that word on the on, uh, whatever. You can. No, no, I just generally don't curse anyways. So, <laughs> <laughs> because you're, you're also a Jesus you know, boy. So, so he says, but yeah. I heard Mother Alpha say they made hove. Made hove say, okay, then make another hove, right? It's like, yeah, they're bragging that you made me. It's okay, go and do it again now. Mm. Go and do it again. And that's the highest form of greatness to replicate greatness, mm. you know? So that's my goal now. I want to sit down. I mean, Akon is so rich today simply because of Lady Gaga, you know? So I want to be able to sit down and look and count, not how many awards, how many trophies have I got on shelves, but I want to be able to sit down one day and just look at the lives of people mm. that have changed because our paths crossed. That's what I want. Well done with the radio station. Thank I you. think it's absolutely amazing. Thank like you. I've listened a couple of times mm. and I can see how, you know, the, 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 the it's like a happy place. Yeah. Was that also yeah. intentional? That's, yeah, we, we decided that's what, uh, going to be our thing. Our slogan is never hectic. Like it's, life is not that serious. Mm. It's not that hectic. You know, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, it's really not that hectic. Mm. Technology and everything have made life easy. So... Never ever hectic. Stress. Nothing. No stress. We don't do stress. Mm. We just don't. Mm. No, that's and so. So uh, there's this question that I always love to ask. I'm gonna take presenters. this off for a second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really cute. No, thank you. But oh my god, I is really tall, guys. Honestly, okay. look at how long his legs are. Forty-five with a nice build. If I take this shirt off, you people will rush me. What do you mean? That's, <laughs> like you don't don't test me. Oh, like I'm this look by fifty. I, I'm planning a, a photo shoot for fifty where I'll give them shirtless. <laughs> oh my God. That's in five years. Ah, watch me. I'm on it. I'm I'm already almost six you know, pack. The thing is, I'm turning a very big age this year, and I'm so nervous. I can. I'm so nervous. Like, at first I started the year with him. I didn't want to do anything. I shall not be nervous. The band. I'm going to call him out. The band called me. Don't do bed day. Oh. You, know <laughs> you know this industry. Did I do my birthday? Did not just do his birthday? Who shouted when they were 40? Don't do any bed day. They will retire you. I, I will retire. call their ages now. Are they joking? They should I was themselves. Like, that part, what do you mean? Because they, they will retire, retire you they before can't the time. You. I'm like, they can't. They can't. <laughs> I mean, you know, I won't lie to you. You know, there's that stage you get to where you're like, ah. If I tell them my age, people are gonna say I'm too old for this. Blah 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 blah. When I feel forms these days. Remember when we were so excited to feel between 18 and 25? You're like, click. click. Okay, between like 35 and 25, you're like, click. click. <laughs> After 35, just nah, like you're not said, checking. It's like... Is it required? <laughs> this, is this answer required? Do you really, what are you really using this information for? Like, why? <laughs> no, back to what I was saying. Like, I always, I am of the opinion that radio presenters make better TV presenters. Without a doubt. I've said this, and TV presenters, Without they always come for me as even, my God. And I say, look at the greats. Rand Seacrest, for instance. Yeah. Oprah started out on radio. Yeah. Wendy started out on Larry radio. King. Harry, Larry King. Larry started King. Started out. You know what I mean? And I feel like because with radio, you, you it's harder. It's a harder job. You, like on television yeah. now, you know, people can love the hair and you just watch the show. Because, and just be like, yeah, oh. I just like the hair. I like the lips. They will watch it. I know, listen... Radio is one of the hardest things. I have to hold your ever. attention and you can't see me. 
I'm talking to you. I'm not. I'm not there. And it's a small window. They, Do you understand? They either tune off or stay. You have like you have like two minutes to catch them or lose them. Do you know that's one of the things you talk about? I remember Ike saying, "Listen, you have less than two minutes to keep them listening to you." Well, and once they on. move, they never come they back. They don't come back. Once they've, look, it's like finding new love. Once they've found something else, before they remember that, ah, I was listening to somebody, let me go back and try again. They, they don't so do what it. do you think is your magic sauce? It's learning to, to get past your inhibitions. You know, learn to get past your own inhibitions. You know, everybody naturally, and it's why they used to call me Wild Child on radio, everybody naturally has their limit, their thing that you think you don't want to, you think, but you don't want to say. Because you don't think anybody else is thinking what you're thinking. Mm. But the truth is, we're all thinking what you're thinking. So to be able to be the person who can say what you're thinking and find a way to put it that is the least offensive, but to be able to say it, that is, that is greatness right there. It's why we love Taylor Swift. It's not because, and yes, I love Taylor Swift. Die. <laughs> Die. I said it. I'm a guy with full chest, six pack, and I like women, but I like Taylor Swift. I'm not. Yeah, so wow. you know why I like her? Because mm -hmm. the girl has made a whole career for herself just singing about her love life. Do you understand? When she's happy, she's singing it. When she's sad, she's singing it. If you've broken her heart, she's coming to drag you with her next song. Do you understand? She just puts it out there. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to be relative to somebody else, mm. right? You want, not related, but relative. So you want your situation to know that your situation is not unique, that somebody else is going through what you're going through, mm. right? And to be able to say it on the radio. Like, I remember one time I came on the radio and like, guys, <laughs> you people are going to take some grind music today because the kind of kanji that's worrying me, the kind of horniness that's worrying me, if you hold two people, one go die. Do you understand? And for the rest of the day, people could not stop messaging me saying, I love that it's not just me. That this thing worries. Oh boy, I think we understand. We understand. Of course, there'll be some self righteous idiots. That, mm. Why is he talking like that? Why, why would you come to the radio and say that? Don't you know children are listening? Mm. Or, or aren't you married? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, God, calm down. This mm. is a real human emotion. Mm. So, being able to get past your inhibition, everything on my inside wanted to be cool, calm, and collected and just behave. But no, I'm like, <laughs> let's all know where I am today. Yeah. Right now, I'm looking at all of you as possibilities. <laughs> 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 As in every woman that walks in here, you are a possibility. Do you understand? Wow. Yeah. So being able to get past yourself and and share yourself mm. with people, mm. you know, through mm. your craft, through what you do, is a real thing. And that's one of your gifts. I know. And I think you actually put that in me. Do you remember you were the one who gave me token moments? Yeah. Guys, <laughs> token moments came from Ike. Ike refused to call me a blonde because people would often refer to blondies as people who are yeah. not that smart. But in the room, I was always the last to get a joke. And it was a thing they always did to me at the station. They would say a joke, and Toka is asking me like five minutes, what did you mean? And I came looked at me one day and said, you're not blonde, but sweetie, let's just call it Toka moments. And that's exactly oh, how it was born. Man, that's beautiful. Thank and you. And you've made, you see, but let me tell you what it is people love most about you, Toka. It's, it's not your fine face, and you do have a fine face. Um, it's, it's the fact that you can say things uh, that people are like, ha. <laughs> Do you understand? But Good you know or what? Bad. I also think Good that they're kinder bad. to guys yeah, no than doubt. they are. Like with you, when you say it, it's like, yeah, he's one of the bros. Mm. But then I don't know if it's the... I personally have always felt, I won't say all men, I really feel like some men hate women. And it's not about the sex part of it. I just think that they don't like... They date us because they have to, <laughs> but I don't think they like us. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what I mean by that. Because just exactly as you've said, yeah. I'm a bit like that. Mm. But I can't get a pass. But Tokes, little young girls astray, walking red flag. It's like, okay. guys, uh, if a guy came up in here and said what I just even said about men yeah. not liking new men, they'll be like, yeah, bro, what? Mm, <laughs> no, it's preach. not. No, let me tell you. The but if it's a woman, hey, let me that's tell you the only place good. where I won't, won't completely agree with you, right? I don't think it's like guys don't like women. I think, and I'm going to just put this out here now. And, you guys can do it. It's what you want. But it's it's a man's world. It's, it is still, it used to be, and with all the female independence and the feminist. irreplaceable, the feminism and feminists and all that stuff and the convention in Beijing, listen, it's still a man's world. And you can... Who made it that, though? Do with it what you will, right? I'm not asking why it is. I'm not saying it should be. I'm not saying you know, um, that it makes everything okay. But 
this is the reality and to avoid or to deny the reality is just going to hurt you and surprise you every time. What I mean by it's a man's world is that we are kinder to men generally mm. than we are to women. And that's not guys being kinder to men. Women are kinder to men than they are to women. So I can come on here and say, whew, oh, well, I've been horny for the last week. And we will all laugh. And they might even enter your DM and be like, hmm, what can we exactly. do about that? Yeah, and they will, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but if a girl, a married woman comes up here and just says randomly, I've been horny for the past week, it's immediately a family discussion. How dare she? Mm. And her husband is there, mm. and this, that, that, and blah, blah, blah. You know, because generally, people are kinder to men. I don't know why, mm. but it is what it is. You know, Ike used to teach me things about men. Like, he would say to me, you know, as a woman, I could, one day you said we're hosting, I think, MBGN. And you looked me in the face and said, you are not hard. You just haven't met a guy that is capable. <laughs> You're like, I can, if I wasn't married, I, I could date you. With ease. I, you I, I, I would say that anywhere with ease. And you'll be all right, though. You'd have been just fine. No stress. No stress. The truth is, most, most, let me, let me, let me make this a general thing. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with the way guys and girls are dating today. Mm -hmm. It's just far too commercial, right? Um... The guys want what they want out of the girl, and the girl wants what she wants out of the guy. That's not a relationship. That's a business transaction, mm. right? So it's working because it's now a business transaction. It works to some degree where there's equal understanding. I want, I'm, I'm using you for this. I'm using you for this. Mm. But it's sad because it's not the true element of either the woman or the man. Mm. Do you understand? I believe in a soft life for women. You see, the relationship between a man and a woman is supposed to be like the relationship between a person in the gym and their trainer. Mm. Do you understand? So I a, never thought about it like that. Let, let me explain. So, so a guy goes to the gym, mm. right? He's a scrawny guy, chill guy. First day you go to the gym, they give you nothing to carry. You're just doing body weights and everything. You're doing okay. But after a while, you come to the gym one day and your trainer just hands you a bar. He's like, carry this. You're like, ah. What's going on? Then before you know, he's put weight on it. Like, carry this. You're like, ah, what's going on? And it seems like he's stressing you, but he's building you, mm. right? If the weight is too much for you, he'll step in mm. and carry with you maybe two fingers just to help you get through that rep. And then if, before you know it, you can carry the weight on your own. Mm. That's exactly how a wife is supposed to be to her husband. When you come in, she's, she's taking whatever you're coming with mm. as you are. I've married you as you are. But before you know it, she'll put a, a little bit of weight on you. Mm -hmm. She, she's putting the weight, but she's not supposed to carry the weight. Mm. You understand? You are supposed to carry that weight. Yes, she can step in and help you very minimally, you know, to support you a little bit. But it's not her job to carry the weight. It's yours. So you have to build up the ability to carry that weight. Mm. Yes, and every good trainer will not, don't give the person more than what they can, they can. carry. Yeah. So do what do you understand? feel about this? What do you bring to the table conversation? I think it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I think it's a whole problem because it's still too transactional. What do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? You're, you're missing the fact that there are roles. Mm. So in my relationship with my wife, there's we, we never sit down and have that what do you bring to the table conversation, but I have a role and she has a role, mm. right? The, the role of... And they're going to come, and I can see they're going to come and drag me for this. The role in every relationship, right? A man should pursue woman is to be pursued mm. right look at every animal in the world every every animal in the world has a meeting ritual mm. right where the man pursues and then the woman you know responds to his pursuits yes after he has caught her she may she may also indicate okay uh, come with time oh, but generally the man pursues the woman is the pursuit the mm -hmm. right that's that's the standard mm. every relationship in the world it's not different for human beings. The minute we start making it more business transactional, okay, well, I have this, 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 and this. What have you got? Okay, mm. compare cards. Uh, you've missed it. But I think it's always been. Uh, hear me, hear me Tell out. Tell me. Right? I feel like from time immemorial, there was this unspoken rule about if you look at the Bible, for instance, I'm yet to find in the Bible where women were working as hard as we work today. It was yeah. almost like an unspoken rule where it's like the man is the hunter provides for his family when you look at moses when you look at abraham when you look at god never sent the woman to work you never the, really saw Eve. that sarah was out there trying to drag feminism with abraham of she even called him my lord yes all through the days of her life do you know god what i mean never sent any woman to work that's why were women made that god made adam placed him in the garden to till the ground right mm -hmm. then he said he made woman help to me. help him no she didn't 
he didn't make her to help with the work. The work was never too much for Adam. Mm. It was because the Bible said Adam was alone, which is the fusion of two words, all one, right? Mm -hmm. He was just one person. Every other animal had a pair, had a, an assistant, had a person to find love and companionship with, but Adam was one. And that was why God made, made woman. So the purpose of every woman in every man's life is companionship. It's mm. not. It's not. It's not sex, mm. or it's not any of the things she's offering. If you, if I had to put it down to one word, I'd say it's peace of mind. Mm. You understand? If I, if I put it down to one thing, I would say it's peace of mind. Sometimes know? women want to want to give peace, so. but sometimes <laughs> the men, it's like they, they want war. Do you understand? I know. It's like I don't want you know, peace. It's like, I want it's like it's, I think I think I think where the problem came, and Damn. I might be wrong, but in my mind, where the problem came is. We as human beings now began to value things and use people yeah. as to how it was it's supposed to originally be. Where you value people, your helpmates, things. your companion, and you use things. But now everybody is selfishly dating. That's so deep. Everyone is selfishly yeah. dating. It might not even be financial status. A man is not as vulnerable because he just believes that he has options. And when you have options, you don't value that thing. Yeah. You use it, right? Because if it doesn't work, it's like you having ten pairs of glasses. One, this is one. not looking great today. I wear this one. I wear that one. You don't. There's no deeper connection with one, even if you have one for three months. That's so sad. So I think that's where the problem is, and also women now out of watching a lot of our mothers because I think our mothers yeah, also did us a disservice. I, I am the first to say that a lot of African mothers did us, they didn't, they were not as Died honest for their husbands. as they should have been honest. So many of them covered up. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Many homes, the mothers were the breadwinners. Yeah, but she, she would never let she you She would never it. let you know. She would even give the man the money to say, give to you. So automatically, and some of the men couldn't even deal with the, the ego was a problem. She's fending for the family, taking care of his ego, still taking care. So the kids saw some dysfunctional systems that they thought, yeah, okay, you know what, as I a woman, I would work to have my own. And mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. I, there are guys who appreciate a woman who earns six or seven figures and is never a threat. They don't care. I mean, I've spoken to you before where yeah. you'd be like, I don't care how much my wife earns. My That's wife earns a lot of money. I just, I mean, I just don't, don't care for it. The thing is, I think once you've, once you've come to the place where you, you have to combine your income and his income to achieve anything, um, you're living above your means, you know. I'm not. Listen, I'm not a big baller. I'm not. I'm not claiming to be one of those guys who has all the money in the world. I've never paid for private jet for my wife to fly anywhere, mm. you know. Um, so I haven't gotten to that level yet, right? But I just don't. I'm not looking to her pocket for anything. Like a trainer in the gym, every now and then she may see that ah, Ike's money is a bit slow today. Uh, it's not. As, it's not moving the way I want it to move. And she may come in and do something. That's the trainer stepping in to help you, right? Mm -hmm. I don't ask it of her. She may come in and do something. Um, and it's nice to see, but I would never ask it of her. And I mean, most and generally, once some time has passed, I'm giving her back that money sharply as well, you know? It's mm. not, and it's just, it's just the better way to operate, mm. you know? Mm. Um, it's my system. I know everybody tell, say their system is different. I know many guys who are going uh, half, 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 50, 50, 50, 50. So you'd never be a 50, 50 Never, guy? ever in my life. My wife does not know how much the school fees is. I think she, does, she knows, but she's never once had to bring out money to say I'm going to go and pay school fees. And she would never, in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know? But why don't you decide to like coach? I feel like you have, you, I've said this to you several times, like, and I don't know why you don't listen to me. I feel like there's, there's a lot you can do to help a lot of men out there today. I, I believe it. Men are angry. I, that's, I know what, you know Some what it is. Some of them are like, no be me do you now. No, but you know do you what understand? It is. It's just when you've, you're not living in your, in your purpose. Yeah. Things get messed up. So if you go to the gym, the trainer is giving you weight. You don't carry it. You will leave the, the gym as you came. A sugar, spe sugar cane spec guy. No mm -hmm. muscle. Just broom. You mm -hmm. know. But the other guys who are going to come in there, they're going to open themselves up to the fact that, okay, I'm giving you more stress today. I'm giving you more work today. And they're going to carry that weight. Before you know it, seven months down the line, you have a chiseled guy, good chest, six pack, looking like a, he's not skipping leg day. Everything's looking nice. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You can't want that body. You can't want that lifestyle or that look if you're not measuring up to the lifestyle. Same way, guys, for as long as you're going 50 50 with a woman, you're her mate. For as long as you're going 50 50, everything's 50 50, oh, 
you, you want to go out on a date, you're doing meet me there. You don't want to pick her up. Guy, you're her ah, mate. Ah, God bless you. I, you're get, I said this, Waji, I hope you're listening. Uh, I, I said know, that no matter how accomplished I have become, uh, no matter me. how, Why are you? I never let, I, when, when a guy says meet me at the restaurant, uh, he doesn't see me. You're, There's no need. You're, you're not you serious. understand? No, you, let's meet up. Okay, let's meet up. Then you know, she would drive, you would drive. Baba, you're not serious, though. So then later, based on what are you now doing? I'm a man of the house. It's about that I didn't have enough money, right? So I've been saving up. There's a girl I wanted to send some stuff. I didn't have enough money. Money didn't come right till two weeks after Val's Day. I still got the teddy bear, still got the chocolates, still sent a car hire service to her school, QC. Boots open, helium balloons. You know what it was to have helium balloons back in that day? Helium balloons came out of the whatever. And we're like, oh my God, all her friends are freaking out. Balloons and everything, teddy bear, all that stuff coming out. And then a small note, this is just here to say that there's always someone thinking about you, even with or without Val's Day. Amor, I still had my effect. Even though I didn't have the money mm. as at Val's Day to mm. do something, I still had the effect that was desired. What I'm saying to you is that these men these days are just too lazy to put in the effort. It's not about not 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 um, rich enough, but too lazy mm. to put in the effort. And unfortunately, the women in, also in this generation, uh, because they're transactional, are not placing standards for men to aspire to, right? So there's you don't need to do anything to get sex. You don't need to it's do so anything. Cheap, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's so affordable. So it's just available. Do you understand? You know, it? I was telling a friend of mine that she was like, oh, you know, she was seeing this guy and he stopped calling. And she's like, maybe because I slept with him too soon. I said, I don't think that's the issue. Because sex is the cheapest thing. It's that available. I feel like as a man is wearing his clothes, a girl is already texting that we see yeah. in the town tonight. <laughs> yeah, do you understand? Do you understand? So it's, it's the cheapest available. thing any girl. He just wasn't into you. You know, I don't think that sex, sleeping with guy, a guy early. I think, no, I, I'll be honest. I think that that should play, unless it's um, clear runs, casual knacks. <laughs> where, where a person, it, Claire runs casual knocks. If it, 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 the definition would be where you both know we're this coming into this mm -hmm. and it's not going to go anywhere, mm. right? If it's not Claire runs or casual knocks, you definitely have to set stages for every man. If you're really you interested, you set stage? because they almost make you mad. No, I'll be real. For you. I'll be real with you because every man likes the freak in the bed. Every man. Every man likes the freak in the bed, right? But whether he will be able to see the freak in the bed as a woman in the streets, a lady in the streets, is a completely different thing. Mm. You understand? Whether he'll be able to see that freak in the sheets as a lady in the streets is completely different. He can eventually make the transition of seeing a girl he has seen as a lady in the streets as a freak in the bed, and he'll be excited about that. But to go the other direction, start with the freak in the sheets and then believe her to be the lady in the streets is completely different. Because I'll tell you something, I'm a guy, a woman can get offended as much as they want to about this statement. Every guy, right, who you sleep with on the first date is going to wonder who else has she done this with the first time. Mm. Yes. Now, forget the fact that he's doing it too. Mm. He's not judging himself. Mm. He's judging you. Mm. Right, so... Again, it's a man's world, as you said, it's right? It's a man's world. He's it's judging... Plus, he knows he's being a dog. Mm. Right, he knows he's been a dog. He doesn't want to think of you that way. So if it's not casual knacks, and I'm not judging casual knacks, I'm not judging your um, relationships that you know are not going anywhere. But if it's a relationship where you're actually considering this guy to be someone who will eventually be, make a good husband or boyfriend, it would take the highest level of emotional maturity for him to understand the fact that she's doing this with me does not make her the person that would do this with anybody. Mm. This may still be special to her and it's rare. So mm. do yourself a favor, tension him, hold back. I also feel like I still blame the guys for this epidemic. I blame the guys because for Because so many times, the only thing men have to offer a woman is it's, cash. Yeah. So I've had guys that even when you're interested in getting to know them, I've not asked you for anything. Throw money People you. say because I'm famous. I'm like, no, I find it rather weird that you're talking to me for the first time. Like the very first time you finally get to talk to me. I haven't even asked you for anything. That is money. Can I? Can it's I? It's because that's what can they relate I? with. And I'm like... Well that's, well, that's what they relate with. You, I blame the guys because I believe the guys should take the lead with everything. Yeah, I collect it too. But it's also because... <laughs> <laughs> it's also because... I didn't ask no, and, and they deserve that. They deserve <laughs> that. Right? They, they deserve that. But I blame the guys because the guys should take the lead. But I also blame the women because a guy... The average guy 
relates with nine nine out of the ten women he meets a day are commercial women mm. who want something in exchange for something. So he meets the one out of ten, the girl who is the woman of his dreams. His natural response, because he's met nine girls before you who are materialistic, is to try and relate with you the same way. It takes a while. It takes conditioning. And the reason why, the reason why, the reason why I don't turn it down is also your lesson that you taught me many years ago. That if a man already offers you and you turn it down, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the money, money has, has left, left his, his life. Giving it to somebody else. Money has left his life. Anytime a guy says, "Here, have this," he has thought about it. He has processed it. He has checked. Can I afford to give it? And it has left his life. So if you say you don't want to collect it, somebody else will. And some but, of them are not great for IK. So if you say to a guy, oh, I just met you. Why are you offering me money? They look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. And they would never, it's, I swear, but, I've but seen. But here's the thing. I'm like. Here's the balance to that statement, right? Anytime a guy offers you money, truthfully, he, the money has already left his life. He has, he has let go of that money. He's given it with his full mind. But the balance is not every guy can you afford to take things from. Because some guys, once you take their treats, you are part of their spoil. Right. Mm. Once once you take the things, the trinkets and the things they offer you, right, then you have you have, my friend, you have you have danced to the tune now, you know, do what needs to be done. That's all the way no, that, that, you have so to be who, who yeah, I, I know. What? But we sometimes you have to judge them and put <laughs> and put that guy in his place and explain mm. to him that, you know, you can't you can't pay it's like when I go to MC certain places, there are certain people that no matter what they try, till tomorrow cannot pay me to MC, not because they don't have the money, it's because What's I can't work attitude? for you. Yeah. I can't work for you. Do you understand? Your attitude is wrong. I can't work for you. And when you put those kind of people in their place, it, look, eh, they, they can't understand it, mm. but it's necessary. Mm. It's necessary. Honestly, I think that you are one well-rounded. I've always said this to you. Like I feel like people don't hear you speak enough and you have such a wealth of wisdom that you know, could just come from, your mama did a good job. Yeah, I think she, she did. Raised Thank you. You, Thank you, you and your brothers, actually, because it's not you. just you. Yeah, you know, I've spoken yeah. to your brothers as well. Yeah. And there's, there's just that thing about you know, just believing that you're the bishop of the family and regardless of what happens, you're supposed to cover who you're with. That's right. Not many people have that sort of, and I think it's a gift that you've been giving that you owe to yourself to pass on to the rest of the world. Because a lot of people are just out there just, you know, a lot of men too are hurt. You mm -hmm. know, they too mm -hmm. have seen Shege, you know. No doubt. Girls see them as ATMs, but they, some of them also present themselves that way. And then when the girl down starts collecting, asking you for money, you act like, but that's how you came across. You know yeah. what I mean? You meet somebody, you're not even trying to get to know what does she like. All you think is, ah, in order to get her attention, if I just send that Chanel bag, if I just go to Polo Avenue and I just do this, then it will get her attention. It might, but she still is not interested in dating you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And she's still going to stand her ground. And then, as you said, you move on bitter and think they are all the same women. Yeah. She blocked me after this. Shouldn't book. be. Shouldn't be. Guys need to step up their game and be men. Nigerian About men actually anybody's don't like well -being. me. Nigerian men hate me. Not I think they, they have a crush on me, but deep down they can't accept it. Let me, they hate what let I me call my friend Oshone right now and tell him I'm sitting. I'm, I'm talking to Toke and trust me, you know the Nigerian men like you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, what well, his mid joke crush. Yes, it's you between you and Tiwa Sarid, but then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you met him <laughs> once at my house on my birthday. Yeah yeah, 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 but I don't think it's that Nigerian men don't like you. I think it's that um, many of them have women in their lives that are envious <laughs> of you. And so they cannot be seen to publicly say, I like this girl. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> let, me, let me keep quiet. You say, ah, it's okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, but at the back of their minds, they're smiling. Because yeah. truthfully, I don't think, I, I think who you are, and I know you well. Who you are is beautiful, right? Um, your ability to speak your mind and do all of that is beautiful. I, you remind me so much of a, an aunt of mine. I call her Hollywood, because she's she's a shining, sparkly type of person too. But she's and she's feisty and fun and quick witted like you. Mm -hmm. But she's also very tender in her heart, you know, like very as you are. Yeah, you know, so don't tell them I'm tender. I'll put this voice come and try. I'm wicked. <laughs> She's Mugu tender, go. like a good man. <laughs> eh? Toka is the kind of person that if a good man were to to get with, she he would not only have the time. He you 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 enjoy your marriage. She'll be taking care of you properly. Your house. She, the, if, I'm not saying she would be the one doing all the cooking, but she'll make sure that food is on the table. She'll make sure you're taking care of. Just do what you are supposed to do. She, you know, I, I know 100%. <laughs> like, talk if you married me, you they will be looking for you. The people will be looking for you in the streets. They'll be looking for you because you'll be, so, be, be all right. I, mean. I, I wouldn't ground you or anything or stop you from shining, but you just won't. 
look, eh, you'll be all right. You know when you say you're just going to be all right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have any issues. You wouldn't be looking for anybody. People would be looking for you like, I thought you'd be kind of quiet. Mm. <laughs> Do you it's understand? The grace of God. You'd be one of those, you know, like, mm, it's just the grace of God. You'd be like, I'm telling you. So guys sometimes are judging the wrong things, mm. you know, but there's nothing about you that is not beautiful. Oh, you wow. Don't to, okay. You don't need to change. <laughs> okay. I think you lovely. But please avoid me. <laughs> avoid me. Don't listen to boys. Me. Avoid, avoid me. Because Good guys don't. I'm not well. <laughs> but thank you so much for being a part of this. And thank I can't wait to have you back here. at, you know, when we've upgraded our new studio. Looking forward to it. I think you to have it. to come well back. Done. Well I feel done. Like, I feel like I need to get more of Ike so that men can watch this and their <laughs> brains can be reset. Do you hey. understand? Because you, you definitely have so much to give. And I just, I just, I'm in awe of you. And, you know, you always be. IK, I don't care if you change your name several times, watch out, you know, I can promote everything. You, know, yeah. you are always going to be wild child. You're just such a wild card. I love you, It's baby. so hard to put you in, 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 you know, in a bucket. I mean, you can never really put it in a yeah, bucket. Yeah, no, too similar. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> hanging out with IK and I. This episode was long overdue because we've spoken about it in-house and I was just waiting for the right time to do this. So at least you learned one new thing. He gave me my first week break and he named Talker Moments. Okay, so IK is the reason why we have this today. I will catch you on the next episode of Talker Moments. Bye.